What is happening, everybody? I hope you've had a good time. You know, back in like 2005, something like that. I think my first podcast is Friday, Junior. It's Friday, Junior. It's podcast day. It's made it. And did you come out? Do it electrically. Like, doesn't matter how you feel about the situation. My name is Rap. We're always close out the podcast because we just want to talk about it. We'll talk about yeah. music, we'll share those stories and experience. This is my co-host, Carl, aka the Weird Buddy. Buddy. He is hailing you from this sort of weird era where they're sort of right in that post-grunge. Like, I admit, your fight is a good fight in today's world. Uh, my war was fought 40 years ago, really. We are the two dudes who talk music, and we are here. Hey, I'm too, I'm too quick on that air horn button, oh, mate. How you doing? Man, yeah, that is amazing. I love it. You're second of a dude. Fantastic. How you doing, you legends? It is Thursday, which means it's podcast day. It is. It's our favorite day of the week. And uh, look, we are here with another podcast on our channel. I am the Reverend Rap. This is Beer Buddy, yada, yada, yada. All the spiel <laughs> stuff I got to get through. Um, but look, we do uh, podcasts every Thursday. With some ancillary content, get in the bin in the quick question quarter on the weekends. We have reaction videos that come out every Monday and Friday. And if there's a lot of stuff coming out, we'll have one on a Wednesday too. Tuesdays are a bit of a free day. Not always going to be a video there, but if there's any extra stuff, Tuesdays is when it's going to be coming out. Uh, we've also just launched our Patreon page. So if you really enjoy our content, it would mean a lot if you could pop over there and consider kicking us a couple of dollars a month just to help up the production value of everything here. Uh, but uh, look, how you doing, mate? I'm how you good. Doing? I'm good, man. The content's been pumping out. The reactions have been fun. Got some oh, fucking new yeah. ones ready to go. It's in the yeah. bag. I think we got our first um, oh, our first really yeah. negative one coming up soon. Yeah. So I'll be interested to see what people have to say Keep about an eye out. that from a yeah, certain- Yeah, I'm ready for you. A I'm ready for you. band that is <laughs> lots of members and wears masks that you know, we'll have to see what's what on that one, but- Look, uh, <laughs> where hey, you continuing? Going. I'm good. I'm good, man. I'm good. You know, yeah. just been been um, working from home a little bit. You can probably see the thing here. I got yeah, the work the from home set up going. Um, got the office kind of tidied up a little bit now. So there's yeah. not tons of shit in the back in, in, on the floor in the background there. Um, the little part of wall behind you. The yeah, yeah. The little uh, little all the all the, sh- all the crap in the I fucking love it. I love in it. the fucking thing. Um, but no, we yeah, I'm excited, man. We we've got confirmation that we will be attending Metal to the Max. That yeah, is we confirmed. Are. We are going to be out there for that one. So it's awesome. We're doing all these special episodes, all this special coverage in the run up to the event. All of our guests will be perf- bands that are performing at Metal to the Max Festival. For those of you that don't know, uh, Metal to the Max is a heavy metal festival that is taking place in Silverton, New South Wales. That is out near Broken Hill, so it's a long way from anywhere. Uh, It is taking place on the 5th and 6th of October this year with uh, a little bit of camping, so you can start setting up your campsite. If you get there on the Friday the 4th, you can get all that done. Um, And it is two bands... Sorry, two days, not just two bands. If two bands would be a long way to long way to go for two fucking bands. It is two days of heavy metal featuring thirty of Australia's most badass heavy metal bands. Oh yeah! And it is taking place at the Mad Max Two compound. What? That's yep. going to be insane. Um, you're not we, gonna, and the great thing is, you're not going to pull up to the gate, and no one's going to be going. You know, just walk away. It's going to be come in. Yes, it'll be welcome. Yeah, come in. Have come a good, in. Have a good time. It's going to be amazing. It really, really is. We're going to have links to tickets and all of that stuff down in the description. So if you're interested, if you want to find out more, click on those links. I believe uh, one of the ticket allocations is exhausted already. That the one that's involving a shuttle, the shuttle from, bus one. The shuttle bus from the airport to from Broken Hill Airport to the site at Silverton. So they are moving. Uh, you you want to get in and get them while you can. There is tickets that include campsites. There is day tickets. Uh, there is all sorts of stuff. So look, it's going to be a hell of a time. It's going to be the kind of festival that is going to be very memorable. Hopefully, it's something that continues to happen for years to come. Hopefully, it's something that we can continue to cover in future years and attend in future years. But we are going to be out there. We're going to have a whole set up there. We're going to be covering the whole event all day, talking to bands and punters and just having a blast. So, yeah, come on out. Yeah, come on out. Come on out. Uh, you know, you crack a tinny. We'll sit there and we'll just chill out. 
Enjoy a hell of a, a BYO, a so hell you can of a bring your own music. tinnies. Yep, yeah, buy, buy them elsewhere. Don't wait till you get to yep. Silverton to buy them. We don't want to drink the town dry. Um, no. Think of the fun. locals. The last thing you're going to want is a pub with no beer. Um, but look, we are going to get into today's episode featuring one of the headliners. We had last week, we had one of the bands that's going to be opening. This week, we got one of the headliners. We have with us a band that has been kicking around for about 15 years now. Uh, they are out of Melbourne. They are one of Australia's premier heavy metal bands. Uh, we have with us today Travis from Witch Grinder. Let's get into it. Thank you very much for joining us today, Travis. I apologize that we were having a good old chat and I was just not recording that for like the last 20 minutes. So, um, you know, that's, fine. that's my bad. Uh, but... Yeah, thank you very, very much for taking the time to, to join us today and talk all about Witch Grinder and all the amazing stuff you guys have been doing and what you've got coming up, including but not limited to the Metal to the Max Festival in October. Oh, yeah. Um, we were talking yeah. a little bit about the the origins of the band, sort of going back about 15 years um, and, you know, the influences there, obviously pulling together stuff from like, like you said, like Static X uh ministry you know like seven dust power man 5000 all these kind of things um but still yeah. managing to create something that's very kind of unique to to you guys at the same time um i want to just so we're not like rehashing everything we've talked about and feeling real rehearsed or anything about that okay. we'll, we'll change tax we'll change tax we'll maybe come around to some of that other stuff again you guys yeah. have just released uh your third album Third studio album, Nothing Stays Buried. Third studio. Yep. Yep. How how do you feel that compares to your first album from 2013? How are you like how do you feel that like your process has changed and how the band has evolved over that sort of, you know, 10, 11 year period? Yeah, it's uh, I'm glad that you brought this up now. Because uh, when I got asked these questions, the last well, not that exact same question, mm. but when I've been when I was doing the promo for the the new album, I wasn't really sure where it sat because it was so fresh. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So and now I've had time since the release to like reflect on it and and see how it went and all that. The writing, where, where should I start? The writing process was obviously a lot different It had different members in it. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, compared to what I was listening to back 13 years ago or 10, uh, it was probably 10 years, 10 or 11 years since the first album. Um, I was in a very different headspace for what I wanted, what I was listening to. Um, I think the music's matured a lot, but I still don't find that it's a, a better album than the first one. Um, I'm just trying to... Sorry, it's, re it's really... It's got me thinking all about this. Um, <laughs> look, I, I think we've gr we're grown heaps as a band since that first album. Like, I was experimenting a very, like, a very lot when I wrote that first album, because I had no idea. And there was no, as we kind of discussed before, there was no fans or anyone who was really uh, worried about what we'd put out or we weren't, we weren't at all focused on anyone else. Even though I did say to you earlier that when I write now, I'm still thinking about me as an artist, trying new things and all that, but the fans are in my subconscious as, as if, oh, well, Will they be happy with it as well? Like, I don't want to completely ditch them and, and do my own. If someone picked up a Witch Grinder album, it's like a half an hour experimental, yeah. like, prog album or something. Like, you know, yeah. it, it wouldn't make sense. That does uh, – do you think in saying that, having that constant thought in the back of your mind and having so much experimentation on that first album and, and, and it being so – because you didn't have that sort of fan – to worry about do you think that's why it sort of doesn't like you know like do you, do you think it's sort of because that's always in the back of your mind it stifles a bit of bit of you taking maybe maybe taking that extra step 
and trying that little bit, um, maybe that is outside the, I the think, normal formula? I, I think with the, the first album, because I was experimenting and I hadn't done anything like it before, um, it was wide open. But it also, because I touched on so many things in that first album, but that I didn't explore fully, um, I think now I could still go back to where I was writing with that and go off on little other ways. Oh, that makes okay. Sense. Yeah, no, that does. That so, completely makes sense. Yeah, so it's kind of like that was the, yeah, like a tree. <laughs> yeah. If you want to, like a tree and, it, you know, the Horned album branched out onto one way. And I think this new album branched out, but as you know, it's getting higher and more, yeah. you know, cause I'm, cause I'm learning and it's get, just getting bigger and it's going to grow, grow more branches. But from that first, I feel the first album was, well, actually the first EP that was out in 2010, um, that was definitely the, the seed for Witch Grinder. Mm, like yeah. that, that I knew, I knew what we wanted to do and where we wanted to go with it. Um, but when it got time to write this third album, um, you know, I had, like I said, I had new, new members. Um, we were all, we were just, we were thinking about a, a lot of things, a lot of music that I'd, I'd listened to. We were thinking about our favorite things from the favorite albums that we grew up and listened to, what we could incorporate to mix yeah. in with which kind of sound. Hmm. That seems good. I mean that 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 would have been so much fun too, just to be able to go back and rehash and all that stuff, and yeah, would have made you feel, would have almost made you feel like a teenager again, you know, having all those arguments about what you'd say and what you'd go, and no, that sucks, and oh, that that would have been great. Yeah, no, it was it was good. It was good listening to yeah a lot of older older stuff, older recording. I even listened to some of my older recordings, you know, from uh, what I was doing when I was in the in a band before, which kind of. Just to how see where you, my head was at. Yeah, how do you think you've progressed as a as a as a performer and a vocalist in in that time? Uh, I've learned. I mean, there was a bit. There was there's like a, a great thing about being a little bit innocent and um, is it naive? Yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. There's like there's some there's a beauty about that as well. So like listening to my older stuff. Um before Witch Grinder or even like Witch Grinder's first stuff, there's things that like I look back at now and like, ah, oh, why was I thinking like that's, you know, that goes against those kind of rules. Mm. So, and there's, there's so many things like because you had no rules when you started and then you'll put some into place, um, like for this new album that was coming up, I was like, oh, you know, we can't do that because when I first done this, like we, we said no, none of this. And I was like, well, that's yeah. fucking stupid. You know, like you, you start putting up barriers on your, on yourself and yeah. um, it limits you. So yeah. I, I love the stuff that I've, you know, I love being so young and not knowing what I was doing back then, but also it, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of annoying because then when you get to, you know, years, years ahead and then you're still, using these little, those, like I said, those little rules that I put in there, um, they shouldn't be there. You yeah. Know? You should just be free to, to do what you want. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I, I, I agree. Like it's sometimes when you're, you know, a teenager going through that sort of early stages of learning to write music and finding your, your place in that you can, like some people, I guess, feel like they have, like they have to follow certain rules or for other people, they maybe don't, they maybe just like, you don't, you're not aware of the quote unquote rules, like you said. So you'll, you'll do just weird random combinations or weird creative choices that, that, you know, as you kind of go further down the, down the road, like you say, you, you get this, um, this idea of what the rules are supposed to be and what, you know, maybe you don't take those choices when you're, yep. when you're more mature, but that's awesome that you're ref referring back to that stuff and finding, um, you know, find, finding ways to look back at how far you've come and still, but still also get something that, you know, learning lessons from your old self in a way. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's good to, I wouldn't, you know, cause I wouldn't say they were mistakes, but it's good to look back a little bit uh, to move forward. 
But also, you don't want to be looking back too much and be and and you know get stuck back in that, that same place. Like and um, think a bit over overthink it. Like it's for what was good at the time. Like yeah. with this with this album that um, you know this album that I just wrote. My dad's a huge, huge uh, witch grinder fan. That's good. He's man. very, you know, I call it like you know, I think he's a little bit, you know, there's a little bit of bias. He kind of stuff going on there. But um, you know, he he asked me how the album was going when I was writing it, and I just and I remember saying to him, "It's you know, it's really really good," and I was just like, "It's the best we can do at the moment." Yeah. Like, and and I didn't even realize I was what I was saying then until after we finished this album. And like I said, I've had time now to, you know, think about the new album. Like, cause, cause it was always just written and then out. And then, you know, you kind of sit back. So I had no time to reflect on it. But now I sit back and I'm like, oh, you know, I, I was right on it then when I was saying it's the best we can do for, you know, for the time. For, for right now and that's that's i think how everyone you know wants wants to work you want to do the you know because now thinking about i'm already you know how long's the album been out a few months and i'm already concentrating on the on the next album yeah <laughs> a little that's bit. awesome no that no yeah. but that's good like it, it's nice that you can sort of do that and have have that i guess announced to sort of say at this very important time this is the best, mm. and the ne- and and we're looking forward to learning from this one, and implementing it, and making the next one we can the best for that time. Yeah, and I think that's where people get it a bit twisted with albums and and bands and stuff like that. You know, it's like you, you think they fall yeah. off, but it's it might be the best that they can do for that time. It's unfortunate, you know, like but yeah. What's Look, your favorite song on the album? What's your favorite uh, one to? Off the off the line. I mean, one. I think they're all great. <laughs> yes, they and they are. Um, I do like. I like. I think the most witch grinder song on it is um, "Dead by Dawn," which was the first single from it. I just feel that when we were writing the whole album, like I like I just said, I enjoy every song from it. Um, but we wrote that more kind of in the studio than. Um, me doing it outside Mm -hmm. as in usually I've got a few riffs um, and then I start put placing them together very early and then bringing it to into rehearsal and then, and then bringing it back. But we were kind of sitting up there and it was just like that, that kind of beat like the stompy, Mm -hmm. you know, rock and Ramstein thing or whatever you want to call it. We've kind of got names for the drum beats, but, uh, just with those drums just punching through and it was just that nice speed where it was very, it was just full freaking witch grinder, man. And yeah. it just kind of wrote itself. Like we were just, didn't have the lyrics yet, um, but we were doing all those kind of gang like, ah, 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 like, you know, yeah. over it. And uh, it just kind of just fell together. And I, once we were recording it, um, well, once we'd done a few demos, uh, yeah, to me that was, I was already happy because obviously we hadn't finished the album or wrote every song, but I knew when I heard that song that it was going to be, you know, the album was coming together and it was sounding good because we'd, we'd had a, we'd wrote a couple like inject the venom. You bury your own and a couple of maybe an, another our queen of sin. And then, yeah, then it went Dead by Dawn. So we already had a bunch of good songs. So, but when I kind of heard Dead by Dawn, I, I knew that the album was going to be pretty special. Sometimes you just do know. Sometimes it just something comes together really easily, and everything everyone's just firing on all cylinders at the, at the right moments, yeah. and things just come together quite nicely. So, and and hey, look, you know what's what's the story about Paranoid by Black Sabbath? Like they had to. They had needed to fill a few two and a half minutes on the B side, or uh, you know, for something, and they just threw it together, the song together, in like ten minutes, and yeah, it's one of their most iconic so songs. songs. It's, yeah, I think uh, like "Smells Like Teen Spirit" was something like that as well. Mm. <laughs> far I mean, out, and that's, like yeah, it was meant far. "Come As You Are" was meant to be their their big single for that album, and then they kind of quickly wrote 
it smells like Teen Spirit. And I mean, that's an anthem for the mm. the whole start of the nineties, you know, like in the grunge movement. Like, oh, yeah. everyone everyone knows that song. Like, and that's exactly. just bang. Yep. I think that the Beatles done it heaps too, man. I think they just. Uh, I mean, yeah, they they're, they're, their talents are their, their talents on another level. I think you know. Yeah. They are. Oh, far out. Did you start getting into some real, like, iconic territory when you start talking about stuff like that? It's just one song that literally changed your whole life, but what a ten minute song that you wrote, and yeah, the rest of it was all the stuff that you put all the real effort into. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I feel when when you're writing like. This is a problem that I had that I've I've recently learned not to do, and it's when you're in the zone, you might have uh, set aside an hour or two hours to write during the you know during the week or something, and I would tap into something like obviously like writing like how we were in the studio I was saying about Dead by Dawn, and then it's working and the song's just flowing and you're like, man, this is sounding really good, and then. Some of the time I'd go, fuck, this is writing itself. All it's going to need is a chorus and blah, blah, blah. I'll stop now and I'll come back to it because it's already uh, writing itself. Ooh. The worst thing I ever do yeah. is stop. I, sh- I should have just like pushed through for as long as it's, it's with me. Mm. Um, yeah. Now I know until not you to start, do that. Yeah. It's an easy trap so, to fall into. Yeah. You think you've, I've, made tons of, I've made tons of progress. I'll, I'll take a break or I'm doing really, really well. I'll, I'll leave it there for now and then you just – yeah, your momentum's you gone then. Stop. You can't yeah. stop. That's the thing. It's, it's you, mindset. It's your mindset. It's the it's the environment. It's everything. And when you shift down into a new one, all this changes. The smells, yeah. all you, all you, all your senses change. And then when you go back into it, it's hard to replicate again. It's why they. Yeah. I mean, I've seen see stuff that's like you know, if you're trying to be a writer or a musician or like anything creative, right? They what are they? They reckon like you just do something every day. You know, like if you're trying to be a writer, like write. A couple of sen- at least a couple of sentences every day because then you're kind of your mind is kind of always on that creative flow when you're doing that and you're it, you get used to just easily being able to go in and write something and that way you know the idea is even if you are having writer's block and you can't think of much all right cool you've still written something but on days when you know you maybe don't have that writer's block you just have to write start by writing a couple of things and that can open the floodgates you know, um, and it's just, you're absolutely right when you say that mentality is just don't stop while you've got the momentum, you know? Yeah. I've learned, I've learned my lesson a few times from doing <laughs> that. So. Um, but, no. yep. No, go no, on. sorry. You go on. You go on. I've, I, it was that. Okay. Uh, now, <laughs> we, we did a reaction to the film clip and the song for Queen of Sin when that came out. Um, I've I've watched your reaction video. <laughs> uh, look, no, nah, thank you. You gave we, us a nice score. So. We're we're simple gentlemen. You put yeah. attractive alternative women in front of us, and you get you know two thumbs up. Um, yeah, that's it. Yep. <laughs> what? Uh, how? Or three? How was that? How did the idea for that clip come together? How did the? Uh, how was the? Sh- how was the? <laughs> How was the um, like the process of making that video? Whose idea was it? Okay. Can you give us so, on that one? The process behind all the videos and when I write the songs, uh, I'll, I'll start from a little bit even back, mm-hmm. um, just to just to get, you know give it some a bit more to it of course when when i'm writing uh my songs i already have like a list of song titles mm-hmm. um yeah you know, well you know nothing set but i've got all my ideas for song titles when i write a song i usually go to the song titles have a look down the list and then think oh that song sounded Ooh. like this title okay um and i've already got a vision of this of the story um just off the title, but it kind of starts making more sense. Then, then I kind of just put the pieces of puzzle together. That's mm-hmm. how I feel I do it. So I already did have an idea for the, uh, that queen of sin clip, um, where there'd be a queen on a throne and she, you know, she has to let you through whatever it may be. If you're at a, 
you know, it was somewhere in limbo. I, I don't really know what this space is. Like, it's mm. meant to be a bit supernatural. You're not really meant to know. But she is the queen of sin and people would be begging for their lives pretty much, like mm. trying. But she's, you know, she's the queen of sin. She ain't going to take shit. So <laughs> everyone had to be kind of killed. Or she, you know, she was going to torture you. She's going to ruin yeah. your life. <laughs> uh wouldn't be the first alternative girl to ruin my life, I tell you. Yeah, I was. I kind of nearly went to say that, but I. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been we there, lo- brother. Look, look, we, we love you. We love you. We love the alternative women here. We really, really do. Bunch of, bunch of beautiful women. It, uh, it can be very, very easy to not see the red flags for all the red hair. <laughs> they are. It's so girls true. can be heartbreakers, but I guess so yeah, can we. Can. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we're no better. So. Yeah, my one of my good mates, uh, Cameron, he has done a couple of the film clips for Witch Grinders' previous stuff. Um, he is uh, he's just he's amazing with his visions of things that he go, he goes like way off into this into his zone and gets really like if if I if I get, give him something to go from and he's into the idea, he just fully just takes off um when i mentioned that you know i i told him that we'd done a we'd done a clip for dead by dawn done that with just a friend just with their video camera we just went out to the bush and ran around and it was like cheap you know we it was about the evil dead so we wanted it kind of cheap and cheesy we just covered each other in blood and we just done our own thing but this we knew that we wanted to make something a bit special and put in a bit of money but it was still like we didn't have much of a budget um, so I approached him, I just said, look, you know, here's my idea, like a queen, just a queen on a throne more. So I just wanted it more, I was going to have it more banned. Um, so it was going to be more of a performance and then it would just flick from, and you would just see this woman sitting on a, on a throne. And I didn't really know what was going to happen. Maybe, she, yeah, people would go up and try and gift her things and they'd get killed or I just kind of mentioned that a little bit to him and then. He just went, all right, all right, I, you know, I can I can hear it, I can hear it, I can see it, I, I know what's going on, blah, 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 blah. We could do this, we could do this, we could do And this kept going. I was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds cool. And I'm like, you know, we've got a budget. You know, he's like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, I've got it, got it. And he rang me back, you know, a couple of hours later and then it's like, oh, okay, I've got this, like this idea and just went through. And I'm like, it's awesome, but we've got a budget. <laughs> kept having to repeat uh, that we're getting, you know, we had a budget and he's like, it's all right, it's all right, we'll work it out, we'll work it out. So in the end, he, you know, I just ga- I gave him the idea and everything, but he, he's the mastermind when it comes to that, like putting it all together and making it make sense, make it into a story. He organized, you know, we, we brought in so many favors off so many people, um, like all his film kind of crew. He got them. He's good at getting people excited because, like, I agreed to, you know, adding extra to the budget. Um, he's, <laughs> he's like, we got yeah. a budget. That's all right. That's all right. Yeah, You'll be fine. that's all right. That's right. You, you can pay, you can pay me back. Um, <laughs> but so he got all his crew, you know, really invested in it and excited. So they all came in. We we had a bunch of our friends, which are some of the, you know, some of those nice looking women that you talk about. Um, you know, they all came in. Every, everyone just made an effort because we we kind of we knew knew we were doing something cool and special, yeah. like. You know, you, you guys have seen the clip. You know, yeah, it speaks, and it, for, is, it speaks for itself. It's it look, it's a great song and a great clip. A very, it all works thematically together as well. Like all jokes aside about you know, like men being simple creatures, and then you know, like you, you put attractive women in front of us, and we're happy with whatever we're seeing. Like <laughs> the songs, yeah. the songs, great. The film clip's great. The way it all ties together is really awesome. Um, and like, yeah, props to to what? Sorry, what did you say his name was? It Chris? You said his name was Cam. Cam, Cameron. Uh, yeah, Cameron. Uh, yeah. Props to Cameron on that because, like, the the way yeah. that all has cut, that clips come together and everything is just, it's well, mint. it's so good. Because that's one thing you know we we worry about. Like, it can be a bit a bit cheesy for well, I think for a band to just throw attractive women in their in their film clips. Um, you know, that's an easy grab. Yeah. You know, to like yes. like you said, simple minded. <laughs> Guys are just going to, yeah, yeah, watch it and all that. But with this was done, you know, with a lot of 
thinking about it. It wasn't just to throw great, good-looking women in, as you can tell yeah. when you see it. And it is a yeah. very, um, you know, women-empowered kind of yeah. clip in a way. Like, they really are ruling that little mm. area, like the girls rule. <laughs> Boys suck, girls rule kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, so it wasn't just and, – and there's not much of, like, the band performance at all, really. I think there's only – probably not even a – you know – about 30 seconds all up, not even that, of uh, the band performance. But Yeah, well, there was an actual think, story behind it. It wasn't just doing yeah, it for the sake of doing it. I think the – yeah, the clip deserved that. that. Yeah. It needed the story. That, that was That's the main awesome. – That's so cool. Yeah. Um, right. Now, obviously, one of the main reasons that we're talking today is, you know, we're doing this whole special run of episodes in the lead-up to Metal to the Max Festival – which is taking place out at Silverton near Broken Hill at the Mad Max 2 compound on October 6th, ah, 5th and 6th. Um, can't wait. Oh, look, no. when when Kyle told me about this one a couple of months back, he told me about this this uh, festival coming up, immediately I was like enticed by the idea. Mm, I was looking at it going, that sounds killer. That sounds like something I'd love to go to, you know, not just to cover it but to just go as a fan um, because anything, you know, and we were talking about, we've, we've spoken with this, about this kind of privately, uh, like Kyle and myself in that the, the journey to the, to a gig like that almost feels like it makes it more fun because, you know, oh, you, yeah. you know, everyone's had a great journey to get there. Everyone's done a lot of traveling to get there. And so everyone wants it to be as fun as possible. Everyone wants to make the trip worth it. Right. Um, and, you know, being at not just an iconic Australian, loc- like an uh, iconic thing for Australia, being like the Mad Max films are like such a big sort of part of, of Australian like culture for, from a certain time period. But just the whole thing of, of heavy metal being very thematic in a lot of ways and it fits the vibe so perfectly and um, we were talking in that little bit that, that before we started recording or before I realized that we weren't recording, sorry, um, that one of the biggest selling points of, of uh, Witch Grinder is on top of just having like amazing music is the live performance that you guys bring to the mm. table there. Um, and you, yep. you mentioned that you have to see Witch Grinder live to, to fully appreciate it, which I think is, you know, um, like honestly, I mean, you mentioned Ramstein as an influence. Like, I didn't get, I didn't fully get Ramstein until I saw. Like, I haven't seen them live in person, but until I saw like live footage, until I saw yeah. f- stuff from their live shows, and I'm like, something clicked. I'm like, I get it now. Um, uh, are you like, you know, you guys have got bring lots of like light show and pyro of your own to a lot of these things. Is there anything in the works for this particular show, given the uniqueness of the location that you're kind of having the works that you can tell us about? Can, or can you tell us? <laughs> you, or? You, you're, tr- you're trying to get secrets out of me. Ah, <laughs> I knew I you, it. I knew I you guys it. have something in the works. I know you got yeah. something happening. Look, um, if you can't talk we'll, about it, that's perfectly fine. I just, no, no, uh, no. Nah, we'll just no, have no, to make sure fine. we have an extra, we, we'll, we'll double down and uh, make sure we film the shit out of your set. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, look, my father was a huge, well, still is a huge Mad Max fan. Um, he, you know, he used to tell me about um, parties he used to go to when he was like 18 and stuff. And they'd literally, some dudes would walk around with a can of dog food, how Mad Max used to eat that. Don't really know how <laughs> it worked, if he was eating this dog food or <laughs> what was going on. But, So Mad Max has always been a massive, you know, thing to me when I was growing up because he'd put it on a lot. Well, Mad Max 2 in particular. Um, You know, so that kind of apocalyptic, you know, thing and just where it's set and all that kind of stuff is, it's already very witch grinder. You know what I mean? Like we're we're seeing all about this kind of, uh, you know, horror and, darkness and the end of the world and all these kind of things. So when we were asked to play this, it was huge 
for me. Like I, I was so excited. I didn't know why they wanted us at the start. Oh. <laughs> Headline out in the middle of nowhere, but I did. I, I got it um, once they explained a little bit more to me. Um, so yeah, I was very happy to jump jump on board. I mean, we already wear like our our stage outfits are already pretty, you know, ripped up kind of stuff. But you know, I'm sure we haven't. To be honest, we haven't overly spoken about what we'll be doing at this festival as in terms of the full show yet, because we do have a bunch of shows in August. Mm -hmm. Nice. um, Just around. Yeah. Um, But there'll be definitely something special for this due to the theme of where it is and, you know, us getting into it. I'm sure that to me, I think a bunch of the bands are going to be kind of going with Mm. some of the Mad Max theme just for fun. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. As it for two days camping with great bands. Like I've just I've got the flyer up here now. I'm just looking at like Hidden Intent, Orpheus, oh, it's Demon a, Ed it's Harlot. It's a stacked lineup. Yeah. Like it's wild. Oh, it is. It's massive. Well, it, I heard really about really it off the Anton, Anton and Major Crew. Anton and Major Crew were the ones that told me about it. And mm. The next oh, yeah, I think cool. it was like the next day I was on the blow at a raft going, mate, we gotta keep an eye out for this. Yeah. Yeah. I really hope it's I I hope it's um uh, very successful for them. I mean, like the band lineup is just insane for local talent. Mm. Mm. Um, it's such a cool idea to have it out there. Um, From what we have heard, tickets are shifting pretty quickly for it. They're, they are moving, yeah, nice. which is good. Um, yep. Is your dad going to be coming given his, his I'd, Mad Max I, fandom? I, I, to be honest, he hasn't really, I haven't heard him bring it up for a bit, but I, Highly doubt that he would not not be there. What? Yeah, you don't. I yeah, doubt that he miss it. I doubt that he'll miss it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, he, he does come to a fair foot, few shows, uh, and like if if it's something like our launch or something, mm. he'll he'll come up and um, you know, he does all nighters with me, man. We I, I finish you know playing and then we go out and hit the hit the town and. He, but he, he drinks more than me. Like, I, I got to go to bed, and he's still up partying. And then he gets the train back to the country. So he'll, he'll be up. He'll be up there. He'll probably be up for the two days and partying hard. As long oh, as that's man, I'm going to smash some cans with your old man. Yeah, he'll, he'll love it. He's, <laughs> he, he's, 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 I, get, I get. The We've got to get him in the tent. We've got to get him in the tent. Uh, I reckon he's going to be a fiend all weekend. He'll be like the. I, there'll be he'll legends. Like, there'll probably, be legends. Legends. He'll be eating that dog food. Dog food. food. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, man. maybe maybe we should just buy a bunch of canned canned fruit and, for the weekend and just just take the take the labels off and make make little dog put, food put ones. Dog food, food, yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, so that's that's really cool. Is there any bands in particular um, that? You're looking forward to seeing on that weekend. Orpheus and Mega. That Orpheus and Mega. I'm really, really, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but I've that's so the singer and guitarist and also the drummer actually had a lot to do with the new album. Okay. Uh, which got his new album. The singer, guitarist Chris recorded and mixed and produced. The new album. Awesome. Oh, wow. So, yeah, there's like, ah, uh, they are just, they're, they're an amazing band, um, which I haven't seen live for so, so long. And um, every time they're playing live, I'm like, yep, yeah, I'll, I'll, like they play, I think they had their single launch a couple of weeks ago, said I'd be coming. No, nah, didn't make it. And that's been a thing that's been going on for the last. I don't know how many years, maybe six years, six or seven years. So I haven't seen them in that long, and I love their band. So I'm very excited to see. Um, uh, as much as like, I'm just I'm, I'm, once again, I'm looking at the the lineup here because there's just so many oh, bands. Every every band's um, gonna kill it. Like it's gonna be an amazing show. Oh, dude, it's it's so good. Like I'm looking here, like the Headstone Villains. They we just done a show with them while we we're on tour. Now, headball we've played with over them with over in Adelaide. Like, there's a lot of bands, man. I I mean, it's kind of cool that we're on the first night because 
then you can enjoy can the second up, day without. We can play up a little bit on the second. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, that's awesome. And I mean, look, uh, I'm, I'm stoked to, because I, I'm one of the things I'm really stoked about is that is being able to see Darker Half, because that's yep. a band that I have, you know, been, like I've been around kicking around this the the Aussie metal scene for, you know, nearing twenty years. And that's a band that I name that I've heard for a lot of that time, but I've never seen them. So yeah, like I'm, I don't, I'm. I'm not sure if I've seen them live. Or not. I'm stoked that I'm getting the chance to 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 finally catch them. Um, obviously, like as you mentioned, like I think last time I caught Witch Grinder was when you guys did Brisbane with Our Last Enemy a little while back. Um, I think. Was... Well, the thing is, I wouldn't be able to put that to a date because uh, our last enemy and Witch Grinder are very we played so many shows close. together. We're, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're, we're like we're great mates and we're great touring buddies, like, mm. as in as in bands. Like um, we did say previously, like before, you know, we realised wasn't recording. Um, that band was one of the you know, bands around the same time when we came out that was doing an industrial metal metal mm. thing. So yeah. I really enjoyed those guys. I mean, they are they're they they're a lot different than us, but at the same time it still fits that kind of you guys what, what we're doing as well. really, really well in terms of live performances yeah. and shows and just the sounds are, are a nice sort of you know, I guess joining for, for live shows. Mm. Fans of one are well, like I mean, are likely to enjoy the other. No, yeah, yeah. No. I so we I, we did do on our album tour. They done the Sydney show with us. That was just us and our last enemy. And um, man, it was. I, I remember, and I said this to them after it. Um, it was honestly the best time I'd ever seen them play live. And we'd been, you know, like I said, we've we played together for so many years. Yeah. Um, I also done that. I I just done our recent tour sober for the first time mm-hmm. ever in my life, which was a, uh, was a big, ch- big change, but I just thought to be honest, it's, it's necessary for where we, what we're doing with our music at the moment. Um, which was funny because I was sober for once and the singer Ollie was drinking the night of, of that yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I liked, I liked, I thought he played better in his set because he'd had a few drinks and he thought I played better in my set because I hadn't drank as much. Okay. So I, don't, I don't know. I think we might have been just stirring each other. Yeah. So can, can I ask then, is that like you don't drink at all anymore or are you just trying not to do that at shows now? If um, you're okay talking about it. I, you know. Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, look, it's mo- no, it's like I still, I still do drink. Um, but mostly, yeah, for shows and stuff now, I I won't get fully into it, but mm-hmm. it's just like too many waking up hungover is, is obviously I'm getting older. Um, that's a bit, that's a huge thing, you know, to get to the next show and to do it properly. If you're going to be doing it night after night, yeah. Um, Any anyone, anyone knows anyone who's been around and and toured and, and been around it for for a long time knows that you, you just can't, you know, you can't keep up. Yeah. Um, you're just going to play worse and worse. Uh, there was a bit of that. And, you know, like a few things have happened over the years where it's just like, ah, oh, that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't have drank so much. Okay. Kind, of, kind of those things um, on tour, you know, you can have a little, you know, you can be a bit more niggly at your bandmates and that kind of thing. So to be honest, I just I just thought I'd try it to see what it was like. And um, mm-hmm. I really, really enjoyed it. I, th- okay. I I feel that the adrenaline was a lot like it was it was better like it wasn't so yeah. so numb um, mm. when I you know it's like you know I'd always get excited before a show and I always put a hundred percent in uh, regardless if I'd had a couple of drinks or not I'd I'd never be there had been occasions where I had been fully wasted but to be honest I I'd, I'd usually just have a couple of drinks before yeah. I get on but then I then I'd write myself off after it. Um, this just felt good, man, because I was just like on a high from that, from the natural high, and there was no, awesome. um, yeah, there was no like alcohol to like kind of mellow it out. 
it's just like I could feel the whole whole thing and and the crowd like talking to the fans and just having that engagement with them where I was sober was just a lot more it was intense after it because I was so freaking t- like worn out yeah. and have to literally get uh, get off stage and walk straight out there and talk to everyone mm-hmm. and everyone being half cut you know and yeah. drunk and going ah and talking to me I was a bit like what's going on like it took me the first couple of shows to to you know um find my the ground there but no it's uh yeah this is the first time i talked about it in an interview i didn't that's <laughs> yeah. no that's okay look i mean there's we... no, nothing, nothing worse than a pissed idiot coming up to you after a set and fucking screaming down your face uh, like, to, uh, to be honest I, I didn't i'm mind. guilty of it because <laughs> i was like you know I'm, i i i'm usually that pissed idiot but I'm probably like on a, a level about 10 times as more as yeah, them. I'd yeah. get off stage and be going, ah, yelling at them. So I, I don't know. Yeah. Was- I mean, look, I, I appreciate you sort of, you know, it's good being, talking about it a little bit like that. Cause it's, it's, look, it, it's something I'm noticing getting kind of getting back out there and, and being amongst like a lot of younger bands is that like a lot of these younger bands, like the, the kind of Gen Z bands coming up now, a lot of them don't drink at all that's just a flat out thing that they don't sort of they don't mm. tend tend to do and I, it's but i'm glad that like that that you know you're making a decision that you feel is best for yourself and best for the fans and you know that that it's cuz i think it's it's easy to fall into the trap right like you have a couple of drinks yeah. to calm your nerves or to loosen up or whatever whatever you however you want to justify it and then it just kind of becomes the norm and you it's it's easy to when you're doing that it's very easy to just slip into it and end up having too much you know on the regular and as you say if you're touring you got to you know especially in australia you know like you've got to be up fucking early to to go off to your next to the next thing or to get your flights or wherever you need to go because you've got to travel so fucking far every time and yeah it's just and and you know some of you know some of those shows you're driving to as well so yeah yeah, not just say even you get if sicker, easier when you're constantly hung over all the time and your body's going to that pressure. So you you notice how like anyone like you know just all those little like a little cold can turn into this big thing. Mm. Where if you where if you were, I've always maybe, been a little bit weird when it comes to <sighs> being sick. <laughs> being okay. like sick of them. So I don't know uh, if I get a slight little fr- friggin' head cold, I'm like nah. Like I'm, I'm dying, and I want to like man flu. Work, man. Like, oh. I, 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 yeah, I, 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 I suck bad. I'm the same. I'm the but same. Yeah, I think I, <sighs> it was also the because we were releasing um, a new album, uh, ca- like the weeks coming up to the album release and the tour. I stopped stopped drinking, so it wasn't just the tour. Mm. It was about a month or so before I stopped as well. Um, and that was kind of because how you were saying, like getting sick and I did get a little bit sick there. Um, it was mostly, uh, it's, it's weird because, but it's true because it, it, it did end and eventually end up happening. Um, but I get concerned before I release something and it's not that I'm worried about the art or the music or anything. But the attention that you get from releasing something and that you need because you need, you want attention, you want all eyes on you and on the album. Um, I love all that, but with attention, you know, comes drama and criticism. Like that. Like and, a, yeah. Uh, I'm not worried about the criticism. It's more like Good. people come out of the woodwork and, you know, like haters on the internet. Uh, I'm not worried yeah. about, you know, people saying things, but. You know, you can get a lot of like negative people who think, you know, for some reason that you wrote this album and it's in, in spite, of, you know, mm-hmm. of them or they're like, you know, and they just see you, you know, on a good thing and they they don't like it. Um, mm. You know, it's this goes for like every. I'm talking about like women and men and yeah. you know whoever it can it can affect just some people who just might. T- Think of it as the wrong way. They might be going through some. I don't know what's happening, mm. <laughs> to be honest. But a, a drama does come with it, and I'd found that off the a few releases before that. So I did before this album was coming out. I I knew something like that could be happening, and that made me very nervous. So I was drinking very heavily um, to the lead up 
and then I realized I needed to stop uh, so I would be able to deal with it in a lot more clear-headed mm. space, which, I, like I said, it, it pretty much went very smoothly, And but then it, at the very end of the tour, just something did come up that reminded me why I, why I had stayed off the alcohol mm. just to, to deal with that kind of situation, um, okay. which I dealt with pretty, pretty well. Cool. Um, that's all. That's good. I love that. I love that for you. Like that's just. So, it's. I support anyone who wants to make those kind of decisions for you know for themselves because it's it's not an easy one, especially in Australian culture. We all know that, no. like drinking is kind of ingrained in in Australian culture in in a way that is probably not healthy. Um, uh, uh, and no, that, it is uh, healthy. And and that's it's not you know, probably <laughs> a lot of the time, people saying no to alcohol <sighs> can be, you know. It can be greeted with confusion or, you know, people can feel like you're, some people can even feel like you're insulting them if you say no to a drink or something. And it's just like, yeah. I'm not, it's not about that. It's about like, no, thank you should be enough of an answer mm. if someone offers mm. you a drink and, you know, it's, yeah. But we fully support people making those decisions for themselves. And Yeah. And- honestly, honestly, I, for the people that did know when I was on the road, um, and for, you know, certain friends that I caught up with on the road and, um, you know, because every city is like a freaking party when you get there. And, you know, I, I, I catch up with, like, there's new people, obviously, that I'm meeting. But, the you know, my older mates um, who would ask me to have a drink with them and I just, you know, quietly say, you know, I'm actually not drinking. Um, everyone supported me fully. Mm. Were like, you know, I, I did think how you were just saying, yeah, there can be a bit of peer pressure. I, I do get that with other things, but... I think the music community there and my, and the fan base and the circle that I'm in mm. were so supportive of it. They, they mentioned, I, I, I'd say it once and they'd, they'd just pretty much say what you guys are saying. They go, that's great. Good on you for doing that. And then yeah, we would move on to a completely different topic and then just be talking music. So yeah. it would only last the two seconds. <laughs> or there might've been someone who goes, are you sure you don't want to drink? I'll be like, I'm sure. And then that was it. Yeah. Like that, it was yeah. just, well, we've seen it. You know, like we, we've seen it. We've I seen what it's done. Well. We've seen what it's done to our idols, right? We've seen what it's done to the people that have inspired <sighs> us and that we have looked up mm-hmm. to in music, and we've like we've seen the damage that it's done. And I yeah. think a lot of us are because in music, at least, we we we've seen that, and we go like we don't want that to happen. Like we don't want that to happen to people we care about. We don't want that to happen to anybody. So we kind of have that understanding of it um, yeah. in, in, you know. Uh, but look, so you said you've got, in addition to Metal to the Max, you've got a few other shows coming up in August. Um, what can you tell us about those? Is that just around like a run of shows around Victoria? Yeah, yeah. That's called the Region Hell Tour. Um, that's, we, we try not to over, as, as you've said, can't remember if we've said it now since we've been recording, but you know, which grind has been around for we fifteen years. Mm-hmm. Like, um, we now are at that stage where we can't overplay Melbourne yeah. or any of those. So you kind of Australia is like the major cities are probably best to do once or twice a year for us. Um, but of course, we want to play. We want to yeah. keep playing. Um, and there are so many places out there, you know, that need, you know, the smaller towns that need to be played. So, yeah, we booked um, a regional tour. Um, we're doing about four shows just around. Just to, we used to do it all the time. When we first started, we were just, we were constantly, like, every weekend we were on the road. We were either driving up to Canberra, like, you know, where you'd seen us or, yeah. you know, and we were playing all these little towns on the way. Um, we haven't done that for a long time, so... We thought we'd test the waters with a, a, you know, a few shows because we want to keep keep out there and playing. Um, you know, if it if it's successful, which um, you know, they're sell it's selling really good. Um, you know, if it's successful, then I'd like to kind of take that to New South Wales, the same like to a region hell, New South Wales. I'm not sure if it'll be this year or or what we'll do. I definitely know next year's over, like everything that's planned is looking more like to overseas um mm. europe Ooh. and japan for next year which oh, yeah yeah far out. so excited japan will go nuts for you lot oh yeah 
we've been there once before, so. Um, oh, mad! There you go. They're going to yeah. go nuts again. Yeah, we hope so. <clears throat> um, really that that cool. was a long time ago. It was it was really fun? So, um, yeah, we've got all that in mind, but at the moment, yeah, it is just looking at just looking at what we can do with with getting out to these, you know, um, these smaller smaller town country towns mm-hmm. um, and seeing how they, you know. If they if they're into it, which I think I'm pretty sure they will be. Oh, they people will get be. Bored, people get bored in the city, you know. And well, then, that's it. And like, you, we we you talked about that with pit, we talked about that with pit vipers the other you know the other week, right? Like they're yeah. from Broken Hill, um, and they're basically opening pretty much, um, on like I think the first day. So they're getting first their day. shit in real early. They're going to get to enjoy the whole weekend with all that pressure off. Um, yeah, right. But you know, like they're they're from out that way and. It's yeah, kind of anything happens, and and everyone's everyone in town's there, you know, because they yeah. want they want people to like they want they want stuff to do. They want to they want to, you know, break up the 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 quiet a little bit. Um, and I don't want to talk to that Steve again. I've seen you fourteen times this week, Steve. <laughs> but you know, I want to I talk mean, to this you, random you person. Look at, you look at a band like, oh, like for example, the guys in Deprivation, right? Like they're from, yep. they're based uh, originally based around Orange, and they were. You know, they had a lot of their shows were out in those regional areas through through a lot of what they did, or some of the bigger bands that are really you know bands like Parkway Drive that used to go out there and do all those kind of regional tours to really you know make the towns and and put themselves on the map because you know I think, I think that there's a bit of respect there. Like if you're out there doing it, it's the the locals are like remember it because it's not something that happens a lot of the time. They don't get a lot of bands coming out there doing that. Um, mm, definitely. and it, I guess, not that I feel it should be needed to do this, but I think in a sense, it can also give a little bit of, I guess, like tour credibility, like you've done the hard, the hard yards, I guess, by, by going out there and doing all that kind of touring on the regular rather than, I, de- um, I definitely am a hundred percent with you on that because mm. as I was saying earlier, like which kind of, when we, you know, we like I said, we don't do it as much now because we only do you know the few shows. Mm-hmm. But when we first started, we were in the car like yeah. every every fucking weekend, man. We were playing to as many as any show that we were asked to play, and we would just say yes, and we would drive and do it. Um, because I always had that in my head that whole touring. You need to like, to me. It was like we need to have at least played fucking three hundred shows until we. Are a band and know what we're doing. Like, yeah, probably that's just a random number I made yeah, up. Yeah, but I, just, I get what you mean. Like, you, you, it gets yeah. you, it gets you in the rhythm. Like, because you don't. I mean, until you've toured with the people in your band, you don't really know if it's something that can work as well. I think that's well, also that's, important. Because that was, yeah, that was what was new for us going away on this this album tour because they are they're not, you know. They're, they're different members than the original and they're not all new members, but mm. us as a full group of the, all four of us, we hadn't been on the road um, very much together. We'd done a few, we'd done an international support for Static X, three shows with that, a Power Man 5,000 show support. And we, what else did we do? Uh, oh, we went up to the Northern Territory and mm. we played up in there, which is another perfect example of kind of what you were saying about, you know, people starving for stuff up there. And they've got a they've got an awesome scene, man. Like, yeah. it's so crazy. Uh, there's this dude, Pirate, um, who, who run the Blacken Festival and things like that. And everyone kind of come out, like you were saying, like all the locals come out. They, they come and enjoy it and mm. people would come from everywhere. So I'm... I'm pretty confident that metal, metal to the max, will be something like that. That's yeah, that right. very. That's what we're, that's well. what I'm hoping. That's really what I'm hoping. And just all like. the town. You got to think all the towns around it are going to want to get involved. Yep. No, it's, like, yeah, yeah. And that's going to be. Addition, it's going to be trouble. That's that's in addition to everyone who just thinks it sounds like a sick idea and is going to travel mm. for it. I mean, if it goes, I have a feeling that if it goes well. Um, when and, it goes and has, well, and, and you know, if it gets a couple of years under its belt, that you will probably see, if not already for this one, like if it doesn't happen for this one, I think if it keeps going and has a bit of success, 
it's the kind of event that I think people will travel internationally for. People will come from overseas to to attend something like this because it is such a unique event, Um, and it offers having having the mad having it at the Mad Mad Max like compound, and you know, just even near it, and having that idea, I think is is a massive seller on it. Like, Mm. you know, as as we were talking about, I can't remember if it was this. No, that's all right. That's all right. Sorry um, again. You know, people are, you know, they love Mad Max. Like the new one just come, the, uh, the yeah. Furiosa just come out, um, and that was a great movie. You know, a great um, follow up to that Fury Road. People are interested in it, man. Mm-hmm. Like they can't get enough of it. So I just, yeah, I. It's a generation. I'm so excited to see how now, it plays like, out. You yeah. think about it. It's like That's my it. dad watched. My dad watched it. I watched it. My kids will watch it when they're old enough, and they've got new versions of it. Like, I mean, I can still remember the, my parents. The five movies. Yeah, I can remember my parents making a Thunderdome reference when I was like really when I was young, and I didn't get it. And they're like, and they're like, you know, Thun- Mad Max Three Thunderdome, and I was like, mm-hmm. and they're like, they're like. I'm sure you've seen it. I'm like, you. I, I don't see anything you guys haven't shown me. So, like, I haven't <laughs> seen it. And so they they sat us down and watched it. And then it was just like, all right, cool. Like, that's definitely a vibe. Um, and, yeah, like, it's, it's just going to be, like, the people are traveling so far. No one's, everyone's going to want to have as much fun as they can. And I think it's going to be, I think if anyone does get a bit out of hand, that things will be a bit self-policing and that, you know, they'll, no one's going to want we'll have our that own to ruin, home. no one's going to want that to ruin mm. anyone else's time by, by someone getting I, a bit too into it, you know, so. I pretty much guarantee that there won't be any trouble. Yeah. Um, yes. And if there I'd is, be, don't forget be, people, there's a lot of holes in those deserts. You can go walking yeah, off and well, you never come back. <laughs> I've been to a lot of festivals and like, little and like on smaller scales or big big scales like out at these things and also being a metal festival Mm -hmm. and being around those kind of people um yeah you know there's you know there's a lot worse kind of things that you could be out that you'd be worried about yeah Yeah, metal people are lovely yeah the worst thing you get the worst thing you're gonna have the worst thing you'll probably have is like at night time if if they're wearing all black is coming out of the bushes might look a bit scary if you're going for a leak or something you know like (laughs) or a dingo might come and come yeah a a dingo ate my guitar oh Uh, no (laughs) come back here you flaming dingo right so look we should should have a as we uh as we bring as we reach near the end of the uh the podcast today we want to put a question to you it's something that we've decided we're going to utilize uh metal to the max to try and come to some sort of definitive answer about um now obviously as you're aware there is a group of bands collectively referred to as the big four uh Oh, and they're mm. generally considered to be the big four of like metal or thrash metal, right? Thrash so obviously metal, Metallica, and, you know, Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, and uh, Anthrax. We have decided we would like to try and get some sort of consensus on who is the big four of new metal. So we are asking all of our guests who, if they were, to, if there was to be a quote unquote big four of new metal uh, tour or show who would be the big four that you would feel most appropriate for that? Uh, the first two are Corn and Limp Biscuit. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, then I would think, because there was two waves of new metal, so next I would go Lincoln Park. Mm-hmm. And... Shit, who would I do for a fourth? <laughs> See, this is the thing. The started, first, the I've first to three, find a bit of consistency here. The first three are really easy, and then you're like, shit, there's only one spot left. I don't know because, like, I know I don't really get into it, but I would have thought, you know, for that newer, like, Linkin Park and Disturbed, maybe. Like, it was Corn, the Biscuit, Linkin Park, Disturbed, but. I don't want to stir on that people. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, look, this is it's your pick. It's your pick. You can yeah, put yeah, whoever you, you don't want them on there. Don't put them on there. Oh, look, I don't know because there's a lot of metal bands that I think, you know, deserve that, you know, deserve a spot. Like I really liked Cold Chamber. 
Ooh. I would have liked to put them on. There you go. Throw um, them on. We'll throw them on it. But I don't. I don't. Just trying to think of who would who still live up today as the big, mm. yeah, the big four. Definitely Corn, Limp Biscuit, Lincoln Park, and then the, the next one I get stuck on because there's there's Seven Dust, there's bunch. I don't know. Would you call Papa Roach new metal? Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, would they? They were. Mm. They were when they first came out. They went a bit um, emo towards the end, I guess. Yeah. I'll leave the uh, I'll leave the fourth one as a, as just a question. Oh no 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 no! You you got to You got to uh, give us one. You have you have to give us one. You have to give us four. Uh, didn't I give you so, four? The votes are the yeah, votes. Cold, are, look, cold we, chamber. Okay, we can do a cold chamber. We can we'll do cold we'll chamber. We'll do cold chamber. Cold chamber for you. So, oh, yeah, it's it's funny because asking people now we're starting to find a consistency. Three of the same ones always different. Mm. And it's really where it seems to be landing. So, but which one's different? The fourth, the fourth one's always the fourth, different. Yeah, because like, everyone so far has said corn, limp biscuit, and Lincoln corn Park pretty pretty readily. Um, yeah, okay. which is like maybe maybe it should be just a big three. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I maybe. think you know they've they've those. Yeah, we need a big three. Okay. But I think I think the Metallica, like the big four there, that was that was more of uh, the thrash Bay area, wasn't yes, it? Yes, for sure. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah. It, well, wasn't well, it wasn't really. It was a bit more, um, they were a bit more grouped into a, a smaller, you know. Mm. It wasn't like, you know, because the, new, the new, new metal is like such a, you know, Broad, mad it, range. It like is. How many, how many new metal bands were there? Like, how many bands were coming out around that time? Well, like, that's what. That's why. That's why we consider new this metal. Is, an yeah, era. like I, I always consider yeah. new metal to be a, a time period rather than a genre. Like, I know when people think new metal. Yeah. They like Limp Biscuit is kind of the the genre that the the style that they tend to kind of immediately go for. Um, oh, see, but but the Death or, Tones new metal. So Carl, they don't Carl consider this. They don't. I do, I put them. I put them in there because they are because in that. I, I, yeah, I, I nearly had reason for going the way the way I sort of consider new metal. You'd probably go like what 1994 around there 1992 maybe to like 2014 2014 maybe 2010 oh that's that's a yeah. far broader maybe. range than yeah. i'd put on it yeah that's, really that's what would you put on it like new metal very much like the real rise of it was like that late 90s period yeah i was going to say nine, yeah okay six, to sort of 2005 really okay 96 to 2005 thereabouts yeah that's good that's good nine years. That's solid. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's. But this is the thing. Like there was this 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 explosion of diversity in metal at the time, right? There was mm. this, yeah. and while there had been bands sort of through the early nineties that were incorporating some rap elements and some more sort of left field things in there, that period it was, was just kind of like there. Were, everything was on the table. People were coming up with all sorts of different sounds, and even the bands that we've talked about here, right? Like you mentioned, you know, Corn, Limp Bizkit. Cold Chamber, Disturbed, um, obviously Manson falls into that that period as well. Um, yeah. You know, Slipknot, See, that, like a lot of these bands, they're from the same period, but genre wise, sound wise, stylistically, they're all fairly diverse from one another in a lot of ways. But they fall well, that's, under that umbrella of new metal. That's why I didn't put, you know, because we've just we've talked about like all the bands that I had. You know, as big influences for Witch Grinders mm. style were Manson, Ramstein, um, you know, Static X, Power mm. Man, uh, Rob Zombie, and all them, which I don't really throw, uh, are thrown into that new metal category, but I don't think that'd be like the new metal. Mm, exactly. Because they are, they are so different. They're, exactly. They're different. But that's what I mean. Like, so many bands from, and now we can kind of look back and go, okay, like they're probably not really new metal, they're probably more this, but. At the time, so much of it was just lumped under that genre because it, everything was so it. different. There was like one band in the world that sounded anything close to what Static X were doing, and that was Static X. So you're not going to yeah. have a genre for one band. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it, it was now we can look back and they're kind of a lot has come from it that's kind of built a genre in that in that vein. But at the time, a lot of bands were doing stuff that just was so different from anything else that was before that lumping them all together as new metal was really the only way to to categorize them at the time. Well, St Static X call themselves evil disco now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So, and I how, think that they, they do yeah. that for fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. for sure. For sure. Like, and I mean, look, they're, they're doing, 
they're doing amazing work <laughs> yeah. there. Like I caught them on the, the I caught them in Cincinnati last year when I was in the US, and then obviously they did that tour out here recently. They brought the tour over here as well, which that was the one you guys were a part of, wasn't it? The latest one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was awesome. So good. Yeah. And I mean, they're all such nice dudes. Like I got to meet them after the show and and had a brief brief chat with them. Um, and they all just seem like, you know, they all seem like just such a nice group of guys. Um, to yeah, be man, out, out totally, around there. Totally are. So, right. So, well, with that, we will um, we'll wrap the podcast up there. Before we f- take it home, is there anything else that uh, people should know about Witch Grinder or what you guys have coming up? I just think. What do I think? I think the people should just, if they don't have a ticket for Metal to the Max, they should definitely go on go to that. Um, yeah. I mean, we do have a we've we've got that regional tour coming up. That's selling really well. I mean, mm. cool if you're if you're out that way. Like, love to see you at the show. But in terms of like to see which grinder, as in for all Australia yeah. or all that, I'd be I'd be uh, looking into how you're going to get out to this festival in the middle of the desert and, and party with all the bands for two days. It's, like, it's going to be a time. It's going to be insane. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be something. Like, it'll be remembered. Mm. Um, Absolutely. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, we're we're going to be out there. We're going to be covering as much of it as we can. We're going to, like I said, we're going to try and have a um, like a a little tent marquee set up for doing interviews throughout the day. We're going to try and do some roving reporting, talking to the bands in their little encampments and and all the the punters that are going to be be kicking around, exploring like cool spots on the site. Uh, I think it's just going to be like we're going to have a lot of fun with it. And uh, yeah, I think. It's just going to be an amazing time all around. So we're going to have links to everything down in the description. We're going to have links for tickets and information on Metal to the Max Festival. We're going to have links to all Witch Grinder uh, socials and Spotify and all that good stuff down there. Uh, so you can get all your links. You can go and follow Witch Grinder on everything, which you should because they're amazing. Um, and we will catch you guys this weekend for Quick Question Quarter and get in the bin. Thank you very, very much for taking the time to speak to us today, Travis. And uh, thank, thank you very buddy. much to everybody All for right. watching. Thank you to my co-host, Kyle, a.k.a. Thank the Beer you, Buddy. Uh... If you had a good time with us today, please consider subscribing and maybe checking out our Patreon. And we'll catch you guys on the next one. Stay cool. Peace out. Peace.